My name is uh, Alexander Xavier and I'm working for the multiple sclerosis team uh, here at the University of, uh, of Newcastle. One interesting thing is when, when, when I talk to people and they hear my accent and they learn I'm, I'm French, they all often happens is that they will ask me about wine and things like that but actually I know nothing about wine but I will still probably give you some really nice recommendation about mm, really nice wine has a nice bouquet and nice finish an earthy taste with hints of berry I can really I fake really well my knowledge about wine uh well to be honest it was a bit random um I did my PhD on genetics and epigenetics of uh, colorectal cancer and Towards the end, I actually started talking to uh, uh, Professor Jeanette Agnes Scott, which is my current supervisor, and she talked to me about that amazing project she had, which is called uh, Oz Immune. Look it up if, if you don't know about it. It's really interesting and basically following uh, MS patients for, from baseline right after they diagnosed up until like right now we are at the 15 year time point. And, and she was very persuasive and it was basically using kind of the same method but applied to a, a different uh, disease and it was really interesting. She immediately convinced me that it was something that is going to be important, that's something that's going to be very impactful and I was on board right away. It's not totally specific to uh, MS research, I would say, but one thing, because I, I'm a bit of a bioinformatician, a bit of a, bit of a nerd, but one thing that I find really uh, interesting lately is well, it's not very lately, it's been happening for the last, I would say, 10 years, but it's the basically the introduction of what we call omics. So there is multi-omics, so for example, what we call genomics, which is the study of all your genome sequencing, epigenomics, which is what I specialize in, which is the study of your epigenome. You have a proteomics for all your proteins, transcriptomics for all your, your uh, RNA and things like that, and it's just gigantic database that will describe very well what's happening in, in your in your body, in a specific tissue and things like that. And when you collect all that for just a single individual and for multiple individual, actually, in fact, it creates an enormous amount of data. And when you pair that with lately, well, everything is all about AI and machine learning. When you pair that with machine learning, it actually allows you to detect things that you probably wouldn't as, uh, as a human, you know, it detects patterns and things like that are really interesting and also hypo hypothesis free. So it's really something that help us discover what's happening in there. So I think that is very important. Uh, I would say the, the main project right now is still working on the project called Ozimmune and the longitudinal uh, study, which is attached to Ozimmune, which is called Oslong. So we are following a, a cohort of more than 200 MS patients and we are collecting blood uh, every five years and we study what we call methylation. So methylation is a really interesting layer of that omics I talked about and it is something that will attach to your DNA without changing the sequence. So I don't know if you know a lot about DNA sequence but we, DNA is made of four little different blocks A, T, G and C and this is your genetic code but you can add little thingies that modify how the DNA actually expresses without changing the DNA sequence and that was me what methylation is and I study that layer in MS patient and it's really interesting because methylation is both uh, modified by your environment, your lifestyle and your genetics which is exactly the case in MS. We know it's part genetics, part lifestyle and part environment so that's what we're doing over a long time uh, in those patients and that's what my research basically focuses on. Yeah, well, it's important because I, I, don't know, I feel like it has the real potential to give us some answer about what is really, really happening in, in those uh, MS patients over time. So in, uh, associated with the blood, we also have a, a lot of data about, you know, clinical data about severity, EDSS and stuff like that, what, what's really happening with their health, the treatment. Um, that they are on and things like that. So we can correlate how that methylation is going to change with uh, basically the, the clinical outcomes of MS. And we can, we can say, oh, well, severe people will have 
that profile on Mars people will have that profile so we can kind of understand what is associated with different things for example severity or, or relapse or things like that and if we understand biologically what's happening it gives us more chance to actually you know do something about it actually don't work that much in the lab i divide my uh, my my work between the lab and, and my desk my computer so i do a lot of bioinformatics but i still do a lot of uh, of, of lab work so it's a, it's a bit of a special profile so i really like the, the lab work i love lab work because to me it's relaxing it's a lot of in the end what i do in particular it's a lot of pipetting so to me i find it very very re relaxing it's just taking a little amount of liquid putting the exact amount of liquid in another little plate and it's 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 really nice and but i also really like uh at my desk on my computer where, where you do analysis and things like that so you can get really creative you can what i really like about bioinformatics is you, you can't really mess it up so you can do anything you want you can do state-of-the-art stuff and you can really come up with creative way of really analyzing the data to really understand what's happening